start. It's on. Hello everyone, my name is Andrei and I'm a reporter of Student TV, which is part of Global Confederation of Romanian Students. Um, next to me, our uh, interview is uh, Antoine. Hello. Um, Hi. Uh, and uh, today we're going to talk a little more about uh, how is life here in Sweden, in Vecro, and uh, how is life uh, like from the perspective of a student. Another thing I would like to tell you is why I'm doing this interview. Firstly, it's because I'm doing what I like, and uh, the second thing is that um, we, uh, me and the Global Federation of Romanian Students, want to help you in case you want to study in uh, one of the Western uh, states. Um, that being said, um, please, would you like to tell us uh, a couple things about yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Antoine. Uh, I come from France. I am 25. Um, and I'm studying here in uh, Vecre Linux University, a renewable electrical power system. It's a master program, so it's in two years. Uh, I started so last August, um, and I'm ending my first year right now. And I'm going to start my second and last year of this program next year, uh, next September. And um, I could say that before I studied the Bachelor in Physics in France. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, um, let's go a little bit back in time. So, like, well, what type of high school did you finish? Uh, what type of high school? Um, we have um, different kind of high school in France. So you can go like for more professional diploma that you can work right after high school, or you can go for like more theoretical and more general diploma, or stay like open for. Uh, higher yeah. studies, yeah. higher education. So I did one of those and uh, I was following the scientific part of yeah. the program. Uh, because uh, in Romania, uh, where there is, it's uh, pretty much a lot of respect for uh, uh, French schools. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, uh, at least our view. We pretty much believe that, you know, your exams are the hardest. Uh, <laughs> when we're competing with you, uh, it's kind of tough. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, but um, I don't. Um, so you studied, you did, a finish, you finished the bachelor's degree in France. Yeah. So how was it like there? Um, how was it? Um, I mean, it was a great experience. I suppose very important in the life of everyone. I think because you're a teenager. Really? So it's uh, yeah. It's uh, you like came in high school. I was uh, 14, I think, and I left. I was 17. So it's kind of important years. Even though, because when you got your diploma in high school, then you have to choose what you want to do. Do you want to go to university to do what? So a lot of question and reflection in your mind. Um, so you have to work with that, all these questions, but also get your diploma at the end. Yeah. Um, so for me, the two first year is three years yeah. in France high school. The first year was three where? years in high school in France. Yeah, three years. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the first year, like general. Yeah. Uh, the second year you have to choose your specialization, so I chose uh, mathematics and physics, scientific part, yeah. specialty mathematics. Um, and then, uh, so for the next two years, you, you study this, this program. Uh, and um, yeah, it was great, it was hard at some times, because uh, when you used to have like good results without really working hard, studying hard, then you got like harder and you have to step up in your everyday working and studying. So uh, it can be hard, but it went, I would say, smoothly for me. But the last year was kind of uh, different because all those questions, what I'm going to do next year, I never thought about it. Yeah. Where should I go? Which university to do what? Which program? So yeah, it was uh, the last year was kind of hard, but it ended good because I got my diploma. And I was able to study physics at university uh, the year after. Yeah, for me, like when I the first day of high school, I went in there. If I could, I would have never went to high school. I would have went straight to university, but that's not possible, <laughs> you know. And of course, you learn some things, but quite disappointed with the high school experience. So, like in Romania, the high school is four years. 
mm-hmm. quite a long time, in my opinion. Uh, and for me, it wasn't fun. It was just something that I had to do. Like for me, the goal was university since I was a kid. You know, I okay. uh, more than that. Before I went to high school, I knew I wanted to come here. So you know, <laughs> I've been preparing pretty much my whole life to uh, go uh, into one of the northern states here. Uh, and uh, you know, for me, university here it's fine. Fine, I suppose. You know, it could be better, but uh, you know, it's still quite quite good education. It's definitely uh, better in my uh, compared to my own country. Like, wh- what are the differences in levels between Sweden and France? Um, you mean at university? Yeah. In levels, um, is it different or is it the same or how is it? It's it's hard to say because university is uh, you have many different programs, so it's wide open. But um, I would say I say it's pretty much the same in difficulty. I would say like yeah. in uh, level wise, uh, French has a like uh, deep culture of mathematics. Yeah. Uh, so maybe the average level of mathematics back in France is maybe higher. I could say. Um, but I can't tell about how different the system, the education system is. Yeah. Um, in France, uh, you have a teacher that teach you could like have your diploma without opening one book from the library. Yeah. The teacher teach you everything. He's writing everything on the board. So there is a lot of hours during like um, class hours during the week. I uh, remember at some point in my first year of um, bachelor, I had like 35 hours of studying. Yeah. Which is really different compared to here, because here you, I barely have like six hours, but I spend my time with, uh, um, reading books from the library. You need more to be, you need to be more independent here, and uh, it's more about self studies. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, and yeah, and uh, when um, when you go in class. You don't like this. Is I, I found the lectures, most of them, not all of them, but are really descriptive. You don't go like into the, the deep knowledge, and then you have to do that by yourself. But the yeah. good point in that is that you're not limited by what the teacher is teaching. In France, you have a program the teacher teaches, teach uses, so you have to follow it. But here, it's wide open so if I want to study like one topic really deep and spend like hours and hours on it I can yeah so uh, it also depends on uh, how the course is being structured like that we have courses that where you have an exam and there are courses where you don't have an exam so on the ones with exams of course you gotta learn what you're gonna get in the exam for sure but once without an exam you can do whatever you want as long as it's what you should do, what mm. uh, relates to the topic. Like, there are courses in which I don't personally go to the lectures, not because, you know, I, it's just because I don't want to go there because I study better on my own. Mm. And uh, <laughs> it's, mm, here you're very independent. Like, yeah. I would say fully independent because there is no direction you have to follow. It's, you have to plan ahead fully by yourself. Mm. And uh, like, do you have two courses in parallel in France, or do you have many at once? No, way more. We have way more courses. Uh, we had um, uh, like here one course is seven point five credits, yeah. so you do fifteen credits per term, so it's two at the time. But in France, like every course is like two or four credits, and you do, like you have one full semester. It's not divided into two yeah. terms, so you got thirty divided by four or two credits so you can have like up to I don't know it's yeah a combination like right? yeah a combination so I would say like nine ten courses which can be pretty tough at the when it's exam time <laughs> yeah oh I like the fact that here the exams are not one right after the others usually yeah. uh, that's nice but still they're when the, they're hard because it's like one exam for one whole course which is quite big usually it depends also on the level like I'm finishing my first year, and I, I'm not gonna say it was easy. It wasn't easy. It wasn't very tough, but still, it was I would say medium to high difficulty mm. even for me. I think I can handle more, but not much more. 
Um, yeah. So, um, Antoine, well, where, uh, what was your like main strength uh, when you studied math? As when I was studying math? You know, like in general, oh, like what general. are you the best at? Oh, uh, topic-wise, you mean? Yeah, like for a topic. Okay, yeah. not a skill. No, no, yeah. Okay. Uh, topic. Um, yeah, I would say math. Uh, I would say math, actually. Uh, logic, mathematical logic. It's. Uh, I feel like as hard as mathematics can be, if you study hard enough, you will always get it. But there is some other like uh, subject like physics, which are really interesting. It's really I love physics, but I feel like I could study like hundred hours one topic of physics and still don't get it. Really? Is yeah. it physics math? Physics is math, but physics is uh, using math to, to, to develop it and to go forward into physics. But you have to, to, to take the mathematic tool to apply it to reality. And sometimes you're like, well, but why do you take these numbers, this mathematic tool, to apply it to this? I don't understand. You know, so you have to, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but yeah, you have to to see the whole picture and to really play with like the, the, the meaning of nature because physics is discrete in nature, that's all it is. So you have to play with the meaning of nature and the, the use of mathematics. So sometimes you can get like really, really sketchy and uh, yeah, you have to set up your mind for it. Kind of, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so uh, who, like, did you know that you always liked physics and mathematics or did someone like help you or guided you? Oh, uh, oh that's a good question. Interesting one. Uh, Are you like independent in your thoughts? I've, I think I have in like the way I think. Yeah. I have like a mathematical logic the way I think like about life in general. Not oh, just shooting but um, and not everyone is like that. So I think it kind of helps and like push me to the mathematics studies yes. and physics also um, uh, my father is an informatician uh, uh, well it's a French word he's working with computers yeah. so uh, I, I guess it kind of put me on the, like scientific tracks also in some way I, I guess but I had an uncle that was really important for me in my education and and uh, was a great person anyway and he was a, um, a mathematics teacher but a really good one, yeah. uh, really patient about it, and you could uh, make uh, people um, that don't know anything about mathematics, they c you could make them love math, just m even if you have like a really, really, really basic level. He's, he's like, his first quality was to take something hard and say it an uh, easy way and understandable way yes. for everyone. So, um, yeah, maybe probably uh, unconsciously uh, push me into the scientific yeah, yeah. Uh, side also. But uh, yeah, I've always been attracted and curious in nature and physics. Uh, once again, it's, uh, it's nature. So. Yeah, well, if you could develop some super materials, you know, that would be really cool. Like there are some things, you know, that I don't, li I don't like. So yeah, that, that would really, really be nice because uh, some things blend quite easily and others, you know, they don't last. And yeah. if you manage, you know, to, to, to develop something cool, that would be great because we got to sell that. <laughs> um, yeah. So was it worth it studying all your life up until this point? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, I mean, it's definitely not like all my life, but uh, well, it's a big portion of your life. Yeah, yeah, and um, I like to say that uh, beside like the studying knowledge you get, so I got knowledge in electrical engineering, I got knowledge in physics, mathematics, uh, some language. Um, beside that, it also gives you uh, entire education. If you want to complete a diploma, you have to be strong enough, you have to know what you really want, you have to motivate yourself. So it's uh, all education and you can grow like yourself as a person while studying. Um, yeah, so you basically, when you go to university, you leave your home, your parents' home. Basically, it's what happened to most of the French person. Yes. I had to leave uh, uh, my parents' home and to go to like a, a bigger city to study. 
that was by myself. So then you learn to like really typical thing like cooking, uh, living by yourself, paying your bill, uh, doing your grocery by yourself and stuff. Uh, so it's a, yeah, it's a big part of uh, growing up actually, uh, studying uh, in a higher education. And following, yeah, like I was saying, following a, a old program during three years, it's a big commitment. So you have to be, yeah, you have to be serious. Uh, you have to manage yourself around your studies. You have to organize yourself. Yeah. And yeah, you need you need those skills to complete a diploma. I guess, I think to graduate. Well, firstly, from what I know, it's about in between 10 to 20 percent graduation rates, at least in the sciences, and it's tough. I mean. <laughs> Im imagine how many people fail to yeah. finish uh, like I myself feel the heat pretty much every day and it's only going to get harder <laughs> but um, uh, for me I, I like you know studying but yeah. not I don't really love studying to that great uh, extent not, not, I don't go to that height I uh, study because you know it's it's a ramp for your career and it also makes you smarter and it also makes you a better person and prepares you because uh, every day I kind of feel like I am a little better you know faster I am uh, I think way outside the box sometimes and I pro the way I see problems you know it's they become small big problems become small and then I can focus on even bigger problems like many people, I notice that they limit themselves into a very, very small horizon. And for me, going to university just made me think in very big ideas, like that. That, that was my main thing for me. What I learned, not really important, but maybe, maybe it's correlated to growth. Maybe, I don't know. Because I feel like what I'm learning is not useful, but, you know, it still helps in some way. That's my take on it. Um, yeah, so, um, like, what is your main passion in life? Like, what, what makes you, like, not, uh, want to live? Well, uh, <laughs> what makes me want to live? Um, I would say uh, meeting people through different experiences. So it's a really wi wide answer, I know. Yes, um, yes. But it's yeah, trying things out, uh, putting myself in uh, out of my comfort zone, um, going out. Uh, I mean, out there, and uh, yeah, experiencing. So going abroad, shooting, for example, going traveling, or going to country that I don't know the language, try to learn it, meeting people that are different than me. This is the big point, and I think, uh, yeah, that doing this makes you know yourself better, and this is what I want to do. So, and just yeah, just wonderful experiences to meet people sometimes, yeah. meet people and their countries, culture. Yeah, I would say this is, uh, yeah, what I like to do. Yeah, well, my main passion is just to become in a position where I'm. Uh, I have, uh, I'm high enough on the social uh, hierarchy and also I have enough skill so that I can solve at least one big problem uh, that there are uh, out there, there are many problems that you know I don't really like and I would like to at least try to solve one big problem uh, because it's so comfortable to, you know, to not think about them mm. and uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, uh, they really want someone that is able to manage, to, you know, to, to fix the problems in our society. And there are many, and that's why I'm basically here, so that I can become in a position where I can fix that. Um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of dedication, <laughs> from my opinion. And uh, you know, all you have to do is not complain uh, that much mm -hmm. and just try to do it. Um, I don't. I didn't ask you about your passion, uh, uh, just because I have to ask you because one of the things that I want to, that I like to do is uh, 
interviews and uh, these messages for the people that are watching us. So um, if you want to learn more about how you can study in uh, a university, you can come and study <laughs> here with me at Linnaeus University in Vecchio in Sweden, or you can pick one from uh, all the other states that uh, we have people in. And um, all you have to do is go on our website, uh, and uh, well, you can find more information there, and you can also write uh, down below. You can uh, ask us uh, in the live stream on Facebook or on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe and like our videos. Um, let's go back. Um, so, how did you decide to apply for this university in Sweden? Um, well, I wanted to study in Sweden. So, I mean, in Scandinavia, I would say. So, yes. either Sweden, um, Finland, Norway, or Denmark, or so. Uh, just because uh, I wanted to meet the culture, the northern culture. Um, because I, I could hear a lot about it and was like kind of uh, really um, um, uh, yeah uh, happy people there like a really uh, well structured society so I wanted to study there and then I had to pick up a program so I was looking for the best program in my interest so I wanted to study um, um, how basically how to make energy in a clean way to make yes. energy so I found uh, two programs and I got admitted here uh, at Linnaeus University and uh, now I'm studying, I'm studying what I like, so yeah. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. Yeah. And uh, like w what are the, ener the energy producing uh, like technologies that you like the most? Oh, well, um, there's not one that I yeah, like but the most. You, you have uh, to like a couple of them, right? Yeah, like w I like wind turbine, of course, because it's like kind of the symbol of the the grid transformation yeah. uh, uh, and I think they look nice uh, even in the like sceneries so you think they look nice yeah I think they look I nice I hate how they look yeah I li I'm like I'm a nature lover I like big landscape and just see wild thing but actually I've seen that I've been in a place yesterday where there was like not so like 45 minutes driving up north yeah uh, this is where I'm gonna work this summer and this is in the middle of nowhere, so just forest and lakes around. So this is Sweden, and you got like those um, uh, wind uh, wind turbines uh, plants, uh, which is I don't know a few kilometers away, but you can see it uh, from the place I work, and so you can see it. And I think it fits pretty nice the scenery to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for me. Uh, I think wind turbines are very cool. It's very cool if they've been placed in the sea, you know, way, way up there, but not on land. Personally, I don't like wind uh, turbines okay. on land. But it's not even it's an emotional reason. It's just because I don't like them. It's not because, <laughs> you know, I, I personally don't know exactly how many megawatts they produce in the next amount of time yeah, and yeah. All, all the technicalities. Uh, you know, so you're big on uh, wind turbines. What? You you want to build a lot of wind turbines um, everywhere? I want to build a sustainable way to produce electricity for people. Yeah. So I th guess it involves uh, building uh, wind turbines. Yeah. yeah. Or like building, uh, designing a plan to build wind turbines. Yeah. And um, you you don't like solar, right? Um, why would you say that? <laughs> so do you like solar? Yeah, I like uh, I like all kind of. Um, I mean, there are some that I like the most, but I like all kind of way of producing clean energy, even if none of them are 100% clean. That's for sure. But I think all of them. What I like is that all of them have like a different um, pros and cons. So you actually need com to combine them. Uh, it you cannot run like a huge grid like an entire country with just like oh. We're gonna go for wind turbine and nothing else. No, you have to combine them. Yeah. Well, personally, what I love the most is uh, nuclear energy. Mm -hmm. But you know, as long as they build uh, new uh, reactors, even the reactors from the seventies, you know, they're not quite perfect. And like, o the only thing that I don't like is that there is no way to manage the waste. Like now, like the w what country uh, manages uh, uh, waste? 
the best way. I think it's actually Sweden, which has a good system of building the repositories. But other than that, it's sort of failure globally. <laughs> um, and but other than that, you know, that's my the technology that I like the most. And as long as you don't build that the nuclear power plant on a volcano, it should be safe. <laughs> well, it should be, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, so one, one uh, the explosion. What we ha it happened before, you know. So yeah, we have experience with blowing things up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, well. Unfortunately. So how, uh, when, what was your first impression of Sweden? My first impression of Sweden, uh, it has to be the English speaking. It is That's really... That's what shocked you? Not, like, shocked me in a good way. Like, I knew that, like, you could speak English in Sweden. Um, but, I mean, that much, like, everyone, in, like, every Swedish person, almost, like, a very 100% can speak English. And this is, to me, this is something huge that demonstrates a big efficiency in the education system, yeah, even at a young age. And uh, yeah, I was just surprised that you can go there and, uh, and speak English with everyone and everyone will be open and kind to you and speak English even if it's not their first language. Sometimes you forgot that this is not their first language because the, the English just sounds perfect. It's crazy. Yeah. Um for me, what shocked me was I have I still um, I still uh, focus on the graphs economically in Sweden, and I have no idea how their country runs so well. Because I have I, I I still don't understand how their country runs so well, because from my point of view, it shouldn't you know mm -hmm. uh, um, something is uh, very strange in Sweden. <laughs> um, but what shocked me is that Sweden is very well developed. Um, there are about 10 million people here and it's, a, it's growing. Uh, the projection for the population growth is just, it's go we can keep growing uh, linearly. And um, the infrastructure is very, very good here in all aspects of life. So firstly, I love that the d when you deal with the state, it's fast. The medical system is not perfect, but it's still good. And um, uh, the infrastructure roads are nice. They're building uh, stuff uh, every day. Like I look at big projects, that's what I like, you know, infrastructure, I love infrastructure. And um, it's done nicely here. Um, but what, sh uh, what also shocked me was Swedish apathy towards progress. Uh, mm. uh, people here, even though they have amazing education, no question about that, no doubt they have amazing education, I feel like they're not using it at all. <laughs> because they have this apathy towards, you know, trying to build, trying to improve yourself. They want, they, they're like up there, but they want to live a simple life when they are exactly the perfect people to not do that, to actually push forward. Mm. That's what shocked me personally. Going back, this is why I said I have no idea why the country runs so well. <laughs> because it's a cultural thing. But maybe I don't get it. Maybe I'll get it later. It's just been one year since I've been here. So there's time to observe more. Well, we have to end our interview for now. Um, and uh, thank you very much for uh, coming and talking to us. You're welcome. Um, for who's still watching the video, please go on our website, ask questions. Me or my colleagues, we are going to answer your questions. You can ask in the comment section. We can ask uh, uh, in. We can message us in the private on uh, Facebook. Uh, that's where you'll find us. And um, always try to get more from life. Thank you, everyone. Everyone. Everyone.